If you're looking for a movie where a giant fake crocodile eats a lot of Italian actors, then today's Sick Flick is for you. Welcome to Sick Flicks, where I take a deep dive into the cinematic sewer to help you embrace your inner gore geek. I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, and today we're tackling Fabrizio DeAngelis' amazing Jaws ripoff, Killer Crocodile. Released in 1989, Killer Crocodile is arguably the second greatest Italian knockoff of Spielberg's classic film. The only one better for my money is Enzo Castellari's Great White, which was such a ripoff that Universal actually won a lawsuit to keep it out of theaters. DeAngelis' film replaces the Killer Great White with a giant flesh-craving crocodile, but it's literally overflowing with scenes that will be immediately recognizable to any anyone familiar with Spielberg's iconic feature. So, how many barf bags will this killer croc earn? Let's get to the gore and find out. The film opens with these two randos getting ready for a day at the beach. Whoa, look out, dude's got a guitar. And a new song. Wanna hear my new song? What is it, rock? Kill the Ghetto Blaster. His new song is called Kill the Ghetto Blaster. I don't know, that's not a very catchy chorus. Screech, is that you? Dustin Diamond is really hard up for work. And Lisa Turtle here is like, God, this is awful. I'd rather get eaten by a giant crocodile than listen to this. Well, what do you think, huh? It stinks. With the tune over, Screech is ready for some action, but Lisa's not in the mood. Oh, come on, Steve, not now. Why not? Because. Huh? After she shuts him down, she's off for a swim. I'm totally sure this is going to end well. She's out here flailing around like a fish in distress when something pulls her under. To his credit, Screech doesn't run to get Zack or Principal Belding, he just dives right in as Lisa here waves goodbye. Sorry! And now we've got Water Cam. Is this like our hands point of view? Come on Fabrizio DeAngelis. From there, we hop over to these two yokels doing a little night fishing. This stretch of the river's no good anymore. It's all fished out. Look, they caught the credits. Probably gonna have to throw Anthony Crenna back, though. Well, they're jibber-jabbering away, this guy's like, hey, I know a better place to fish. Huh, the second victim in this film appears to be the title card. After that, we're going for a swim through the credits. This theme song sounds vaguely familiar. Hey, watch out for the bushes. This is Killer Crocodile, not Drunk Crocodile. One of the best things about these Italian genre films of the 80s was they'd get big stars to be in them. Guys who had no business being in some cheesy Jaws or Dawn of the Dead ripoff. Guys like Van Johnson. Don't be fooled by Larry Ludman and David Parker Jr. That's just Fabrizio DeAngelis and Italian script factory Dardano Sacchetti trying to convince you they're Americans. And while this theme is definitely a John Williams ripoff, Riz Ortolani is an amazing composer revered for his work on the Cannibal Holocaust soundtrack. With the credits over, we cut to these tourists, who look like they're on their way to dying horribly in an Italian cannibal movie. Or maybe it's just a floating meth lab. I'm not sure I like this dog's chances of surviving this movie. I'll also say some of this dialogue is a little on the nose. Our work here's important. Someone's polluting these swamps and it's our job to find out who. Oh wait, so this is like a weird live action Captain Planet movie. Hey, uh, you notice anything strange? There are no birds along this stretch of the river. Well, that's because we couldn't afford to buy any nature documentary B-roll to splice in here. Then it's time for some exposition. The dyes reveal high acid levels caused by industrial waste. The further we go, the worse it gets. After nearly capsizing the boat, they find these conveniently placed barrels of toxic waste. Bob gets into his best Walter White cosplay, and then we get to check it out up close and personal in Bob Cam. I'm glad he brought the Geiger counter so he could determine that all these barrels labeled radioactive were actually radioactive. If you thought Bob was going to be a hot crocodile lunch, sorry to disappoint. He makes it back to the boat in one piece. That night they set up camp, but Cujo wanders off. <laughs> Told you it was going to be a bad end for that dog. Cujo's owner wanders down to the water's edge and finds this collar. And the killer crocodile. You really shouldn't eat dessert before dinner. Also, that's like our third kill and I haven't seen a drop of blood or any good gore yet. Come on, Gennetto De Rossi made this crocodile, he could certainly give us some gore too. The next morning, everyone's looking for Conchita. Conchita, where are you? You don't think something's happened to her, do you? No, I'm sure she's probably just off taking a dump. They're motoring out and hit something again. Conchita! Nice work, Mr. Magoo. And Pam winds up in the water. Man, 
overboard! Um, I believe that's woman overboard. Let's not be sexist. Back on land, they eventually wind up at Judge's place. Van Johnson must have really needed a paycheck. Do I look like I'm kidding? No, but you do look like a semi-retired ice cream truck driver after a long shift. What's up with that neckerchief? Are there vampires in the swamp? That place is all quicksand, snakes, crocodiles. Cannibals? Wait, wrong movie. Judge has had enough, but Kenny Loggins here won't back down. If you want this place crawling with reporters in no time flat, then go ahead, arrest us. After that, we get some more exposition. Man, this is a lot of plot for a killer crocodile movie. For a few days, you're going to have to stop dumping your trash into that swamp. The party started to get rough. All I had to do was look the other way. Back out on the water, they hit something again. Identify most of the toxic <laughs> Christ, can anyone actually drive the boat? Where's Hooper or Quint when you need them? Of course, this means everyone's got to get in the water and look out. Our peep and pal, the killer croc, is watching. Hmm, <laughs> smorgasbord. If this boat's a rockin', come help because it means we ran aground again. After a lot of heaving and hoeing, Pam swims off to find a lever and instead discovers this jump scare. Ah! It's the cheetah! <laughs> Guess they can call off the search for Conchita. Also, this croc apparently has eyes way bigger than his stomach because he didn't eat much. I knew eating the dog was going to ruin his appetite. And just in case you didn't think this movie had enough characters, here comes Killer Crocodile's version of Quint. Here's to swimming with bow-legged women. Man, my Robert Shaw sucks. Holy mackerel, man, if it be a croc, it be a big one. A Just tell me one. where she is. I love this guy's accent. It's like Italian white guy and Rastafarian mixed together. Or as I call it, Pastafarian. Next, we head to the morgue. What's this? Some gore? Conchita here barely has a leg to stand on. This was no boating accident. It was an animal, like a crocodile. Or maybe a boat prop. Or maybe it was. Not sure how you confuse the two, but okay. At any rate, Wormy Toxic Waste Guy has an alternate theory of the crime. You might have started innocent enough. Maybe you just wanted to fool around. You know the way things start. A word, a touch. And then before you know it, one thing leads to the next. Things are getting tense, but then Quint shows up. Guess they couldn't afford a blackboard for him to drag his fingernails across. What do you want, Joe? I want to have a look at the girl who got killed by the crocodile. Quinn here, who actually has the way less exciting name Joe, checks out the corpse. This was no boating accident. Look, I'm sorry, I just love to say that line. Also, they're just unashamedly ripping off Jaws at this point. I love it. Joe has important questions. Where did this happen? My guess is in the water. Then Kenny Loggins and the band take off. This place stinks. Hey, come on, man. Conchita can't help it. She smells. She's been rotten in the water for most of a day. Then it's time for some more exposition. Who's this Joe character? A ball breaker. He's lived in this swamp more than 30 years. After that, Kenny Loggins invites Joe for some beer. Joe, can I talk to you? About what? Come on, I'll buy you a cold beer. Are you hitting on me, Kenny? And of course, Steve Irwin here doesn't notice this 20-foot monster just cruising down the river behind him. Don't look now, but the croc is ready for lunch, and these kids look delicious. First, he eats this Cabbage Patch Kid, and since there's no actual cabbage involved, he's a little hangry. So, he takes it out on the dock. If you're keeping score at home, yes, that's yet another Jaws ripoff. This little girl's hanging by a thread, but don't worry, all these people are just going to stand here and watch her die. Well, except this guy. Look, I want to point out the killer crocodile probably had a budget equal to what you could pull out of your couch cushions. But that croc looks pretty good. Gennetto de Rossi never disappoints. If you guessed Good Samaritan Guy was going to be lunch, well, give yourself a screenwriter's credit. I regret nothing, except rushing out here to try and save you. The next guy up runs out and he winds up dead too. Don't worry though, the white saviors are here to rescue everyone. Kenny Loggins dives right into the danger zone and jams this giant toothpick right into the croc's mouth. Look, you got pieces of those dudes stuck between your teeth. Let me help. And here comes Joe, doing his best Robert Shaw impression. 
I hope they give him a monologue about his time on the USS Indianapolis at some point in this movie. Joe and Judge are planning to kill the croc, but Captain Planet and the Planeteers aren't down with that. We're against killing of any kind. Fucking hippies. Judge does make a pretty compelling case for killing it. You already destroyed the dock, eaten two men, and probably devoured your lady friend. A oh, man, look at this acting. It still has to be protected. Meanwhile, Joe's off buying some black market ammo. You make up those shells for me. Yeah, but keep it under your hat. Well, I'll try, but I'm not sure they'll fit under this hat. That box is pretty tall. Maybe he's so angry he's out to get me. Look, killer crocodiles don't take things personally, Mr. Joe. The Scooby Gang makes one last stab at stopping Joe, which gives us yet another opportunity to see Sherry Rose acting. We'll do everything we can to stop you. He's unswayed by this performance, but Kenny Loggins has a plan. What do we do? We follow him. And we stop him if he finds the crocodile. Hey, remember Toxic Waste Guy? Yeah, he's still in this movie. He's trying to persuade this guy to do one last Toxic Waste run, just in case you forgot about that vitally important subplot. Then we take a boat ride so Captain Exposition can tie all our plot lines together like a sheep bend knot. You think the size of the crocodile has uh, something to do with the uh, radioactive waste? Yeah, this is basically the Toxic Avenger of crocodiles. And then this happens. What happened now? I don't know. Let me take a look. Look at the bright side. If the engine's dead, they can't keep running into shit. So, it's been like five minutes. I suppose this is as good a time as any for another Jaws ripoff moment. Joe docks and finds his prey has become a land croc at this busted down shanty. Then he finds a tooth, just like Hooper did in Ben Gardner's boat. Um, Joe, I don't think the croc can navigate stairs. He's probably not on the second floor. Oh wait, Joe just wanted to give us a little something for the ladies. Oh, and this is another Jaws nod. He's not comparing scars like Quint, Hooper, and Brody, but this is his show and his scar scene nonetheless. If he starts singing Show Me the Way to Go Home, I'm calling Universal. Huh, guess this is Joe's house. Crocodile Dundee apparently fell on hard times after the late 80s. Kenny Loggins and crew are forced to camp for the night, and Pam wakes up to find someone peeping on her. You look so delicious when you're asleep. Oh, thanks, you're sweet. Mind if I come up for a little midnight snack? Mark decides this is a great time for some glamour shots, but the croc is feeling a little camera shy and drags him out into the river instead. Help! Help! Hey, what's happening? Hi! Where are you going? Then, in yet another Jaws scene ripoff, he attacks the boat. You're gonna need a bigger boat. Slowly sinking, Mark has this brilliant idea. Listen, you guys, at least we got a rope. We could tow in the boat, but someone has to swim to shore with the other end. Sounds great. What could go wrong? I mean, besides getting eaten by a 20-foot crocodile. Since Kenny Loggins volunteers to go, it seems safe to assume that nothing bad is going to happen. Well, not to him anyway, but Bob is lining up to be a hot dinner in this scene that feels a lot like one from Jaws 2. Pull yourself up! Kenny's trying to Michael Phelps his way back to the boat, but it's too late for the aptly named Bob, who is probably floating around with no appendages now. The croc's not done, though. He's back for more. Hmm, <laughs> where have I seen a shot like this before? Oh, yeah, Jaws. Also, apparently this crocodile comes with reverse standard. Usually that option costs way more. The next morning, Joe arrives to save the day. It's a white savior saving the white saviors. That's pretty meta. Um, guys, I said you're gonna need a bigger boat. This one is actually smaller than the last one. Eventually, they wind up back at Joe's place. Sorry, it's a bit of a mess right now. I'm in the middle of some home renovation projects. After a chat with Joe, Judge here wants to call in reinforcements, but Toxic Waste Guy is basically the Mayor Vaughn of this movie, and by God, the beaches are gonna stay open. You're not calling in anybody. We're gonna figure this out ourselves. Back at Joe's place, Kenny Loggins is designing this awesome new tattoo. I think I'm gonna get this on my lower back. Put Bob's date of death on it. Should look really sweet. Oh, and he's had a change of heart about saving this croc, too. You still think the crocodile should be saved? If I get the chance, I won't hesitate to kill it. Meanwhile, Judge and Toxic Waste Guy are out in the swamp. This craft is too big for this swamp. 
Bullshit! This baby's carrying a 600 horsepower motor! Nothing can stop us! Yeah, you can drive this bad boy right down the interstate. 600 horsepower motor just chews up concrete, apparently. Honestly, these two are like an old married couple. You don't know the swamp! And you worry too much! After some more bickering, Toxic Waste Guy puts Judge in the water with the least believable punch ever. Then he ditches him like an SUV on a gentle curve. I don't think it matters, Judge. Drowning is the least of your worries. Then the croc is all like, jump scare, motherfucker, as he gets some crazy air and sends Toxic Waste Guy into the water too. His new nickname is Lefty as Croc chomps off that arm like it was a Hemingway novel. Then the boat runs aground and explodes. Joe and Kenny Loggins set out to investigate, and rip off another scene from Jaws 2. Remember when Brody attracts the shark by beating on the underwater power line? Well, here you go. Except he strikes oil instead. Oh wait, it's just Toxic Waste Guy's corpse. Guess the croc ate his shirt. Also, don't want to alarm anyone, but Joe might be insane. Crocodiles are very sensitive. They get really mad when you insult them. Go real crazy. They sail on, and I don't know, this updated version of the African Queen is kind of weird, guys. Joe offers up some strawberry sauce masquerading as blood for bait, and the croc's just chilling over here. Okay, there's no way that thing is 20 feet long. Alright, so maybe this slow motion showdown isn't quite as exciting as the climax of Jaws, but I really hope Joe says, smile you son of a bitch, at some point. And apparently those special bullets were crap. Or this croc is bulletproof. Die, you mother, die! Then, in the film's most absolutely ridiculous scene of all, Joe just hops on the croc's back and rides it like a paddleboard. Joe! Guys, I can't explain to you how much I love this movie. The bad news is the croc is going under and Joe, like any good captain, is going down with the ship. I really wanted to play My Heart Will Go On here, but the music industry is full of vultures who'd copyright claim this video if I did. All in all, Quint got the more spectacular death scene, but it's hard to top Joe's for sheer balls out absurdity. With Joe dead, they decide this is a good time to go through all his stuff. Man, this guy sure owned a lot of croc porn. Mark and Kenny Loggins head out, because if the grizzled croc killer couldn't finish the job, surely these two numbnuts can. Meanwhile, the croc is like, nice, my takeout is here. And surprise, our killer croc is a she. Kenny here starts blasting her eggs. Jesus, they're eggs. They're enormous. They must be its eggs. This, of course, pisses her off, and the final showdown begins. I gotta be honest, the old Jaws ride at Universal Studios was more convincing than this. The boat's sinking again, and surprise, Joe's still alive. This'll bring you luck, kid! Yeah, here, use my smelly lice-infested hat. It's good luck. But hey, I'll give the movie this. Jaws never had a motorboat propeller versus shark scene. See you later, alligator. Choke on that, crocodile. Also, why does this make the croc explode? Oh, right. Jaws. With the croc dead, they sail home. Joe's like the father figure Kenny Loggins never had. And of course, this movie wouldn't be complete without a stinger ending. They missed an egg. This wasn't just any stinger ending, though. They literally filmed Killer Crocodile 2 at the same time as they were making this one. Gennetto De Rossi directed that one, and Joe and Kenny Loggins both returned to battle another monstrous croc. But let's save that one for another day. Just how many barf bags would you need to get through Killer Crocodile? Let's go to the gore card! In terms of gross anatomy, Killer Crocodile mostly delivers. We've got a multitude of crocodile attacks and one exploding crocodile at the climax. There's not a lot of variety in the kills, and they're not quite as gory as you'd expect from Gennetto De Rossi, but there's enough carnage here to earn this one three barf bags out of five. Like I said, this is the second greatest Italian Jaws ripoff as far as I'm concerned. The gore is just icing on the cake. Want to see some more of De Rossi's classic splatter effects? Then check out my review of Lucio Fulci's The Beyond. You'll find a link here on the screen. I'll meet you over there. Until next time, I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, bringing you all the splatter that matters.